Adobe is reporting their earnings tomorrow after the market close and we can see that this is a company that is down more than 20% year to date. In fact, it is trading right there towards its 52 week lows and this has been affected alongside others in the industry in the software like Salesforce, although we can see this is only down around 8% year to date. In fact, Adobe is one of those that has been impacted severely and today we want to understand is this a strong strong buy before their earnings tomorrow is it going to shoot up and do we need to be really really conscious that this could be an undervalued company for today now we're going to do an in-depth view of this company as always we will refresh ourselves on the metrics the free cash flows the rocs we'll also talk about some insider selling that we have noted over the more recent period as well as looking both institutional buys and sells. We also want to talk, in fact, about the market share that Adobe do have to understand whether or not there is any impact moving forward of that market share reducing. And we also want to discuss essentially a viral tweet, very interesting about Adobe, some bearish news that has come out. And in fact, a lot of people do want to know what is going on in terms of AI with Adobe. Are they going to start losing any of that market share? And is there anything that they can bring out to take the likes of Canva as well as other companies from their number one position? Now, as always, we are going to take a look at the numbers, their top line revenue growth, their bottom line net income, as well as essentially their health of the company, their total debt and their total cash. And don't forget, ultimately, what is very important with this company is we want to understand the valuation what is our intrinsic value what is our acceptable buy price considering our investor margin of safety and understand in terms of wall street what they are anticipating over the next 12 months now today we also want to run through the dcf model in quite some detail we're going to look at both the low medium and high so you can also understand where we are getting our final calculation from and whether or not you agree with the estimations moving forward now in terms of this company what they do their market share we can see here that adobe essentially help organizations in the creation of multimedia and creativity software products and what we can in fact see their market share at the moment does sit at number one they have under 61 percent with over 1 million current customers and when you do want to take a look at others in this industry and where they sit well we can in fact see that microsoft do sit there second azure around 15.47 percent so they are one of the market leaders in this space for multimedia and creativity software products so this is definitely one that you should consider for your portfolio if you are looking for a leader in a certain industry now in terms of looking at the numbers and historical performance well they are down as we said 22 percent just year to date over the last five years we can see you'd be up 68 percent although we do see a bit of a roller coaster over that period and if you've been a longer term shareholder well you would be up 531 percent Although we can see here all-time highs do sit at just under $700, although we note that is essentially three years ago. Now, in terms of the forward P, this is one area that people do tend to look at in terms of these companies. They do want to see something a little bit lower. Currently now, 2568 do bear in mind the S&P 500 does sit at around 22 and we are actually going to compare this to the S&P over the last 10 years to see whether or not this has been outperforming. We'll also touch upon others in a similar industry for this number. In terms of buy ratings, well, we have one buy from Wall Street, 4.15 out of 5, so a fairly decent score. Although we do note a hold from Seeking Alpha as well as a hold from Quan. Now, before we jump straight into the numbers, there was a viral tweet that went round not too long ago. And essentially, someone was saying they are cancelling their Adobe license, who was a long term loyal essential customer. Now, the reason for this, what this essentially means, and we'll take a look at the actual fine blueprint, but worldwide royalty free license to reproduce, display, distribute any content that someone uses on their software. As we can see in the highlighted, if you do sign this contract, you grant us a non-exclusive worldwide royalty-free sub licensable license to use, reproduce, public display, distribute, modify, create derivative works based on publicly form and translate your own content. So that is a bit of a worry there whether or not other customers will follow suit and will not continue with Adobe moving forwards. Something to consider, as we did mention, they are currently having a very large market share around 61% and we'll also touch on some of the in-depth numbers to this later on in the episode. 
Now, in terms of the actual top line as well as the bottom line and looking at the balance sheet, We'll start off with a quick health check. Now, total cash versus total debt. We have 3.7 billion sitting in November 2014. Latest annual accounts, 7.8 billion. And with their latest quarterly report from three months ago, 6.8. So over the longer term, in fact, they have been increasing their cash position, as we can see, which is always good. Does give you security if a company does have a nice enough amount sitting on the balance sheet. But reality, in isolation, 6.8 billion doesn't mean anything. We do like to compare it to their total debt just to get a sense of a health check, both numerically and directionally. And what we can, in fact, see 1.5 billion in 2014. 4.1 in their latest quarterly report. Yes, it has increased, but when we do compare it to their cash position, it does give us a sense that they do have a fairly strong balance sheet. As we can see, typically an increasing total debt would be a red flag indicator, but given the amount is very trivial and their cash position is very high, then this isn't a major worry or in fact a worry at all for now for Adobe's balance sheet. Now, when we take a look at their numbers on the top line revenue, as always, you would expect a minimum of three to 7% baseline. What we note for this company software, so we do want to see large increases, 4.1 billion in 2014, latest annual accounts, 19.4 billion. So we are then seeing nearly five times growth on their top line. And it's very, very nice to see that consistent increase a year on year, even during that COVID year where some companies do have a dip with Adobe. It is that pure constant increases over the longer term. So already off to a great start. Then we do bring your attention to the bottom line. Incredible increase, 268 million in 2014, 5.4 billion in their latest annual account. So again, similar to that top line, their bottom line has also increased at a very rapid rate. Although we do note over the last four years, there has been minimal movement. So something just to keep an eye on if they are continuing to increase their top line revenue we also want to see these same apparent increases to their bottom line net income so that is a very quick analysis of their numbers now we also just want to have a very quick look at ai how are adobe going to essentially continue to keep up with their competitors and what we can see here they talk about the future of ai and how they are transforming work and creativity with new ai superpowers that push possible forward and faster so in terms of last month as we can see here they have the next generation of generative ai in their photoshop which is good for those customers that do use their products as we did say though there is some worry there with that fine print about what they can do with the content that you can essentially produce and what they talk about a few different things so they have text to image feature they have greatly improved generative fill experience and they also talk about others essentially that you can use if this is something that is one of those products that is in your essential arsenal now as always though do let me know your thoughts whether or not you do believe that adobe does lack something that others do as someone who does use canva for example a lot of these features are pretty much those that have been replicated on there so there isn't currently anything massive right now that i can say it has a usp in terms of customers choosing this over the others that we did see earlier on now again just to see here if you want to see exactly what some of these features are as we can see one of the major ones being the text to image and they also have generative fill generative expand within their own photoshop and as always, though, do let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Now, we're going to talk about insider ownership. This does sit around 0.15%, and we do see just one insider buy. Pretty trivial amount, 28,000, so we won't talk about that today. But we see eight insiders selling over the last 12 months for around $50 million. Now, it is pretty apparent just looking at all the red that a lot of insiders have been selling quarter on quarter just over the last few years. And in the more recent quarter, we can see 1.4 million worth of sales. And if you want to see who these insiders are, well, very apparent that a sale wasn't too long ago, maybe around four to five weeks. The 2nd of May, the EVP selling over 2,700 shares. $474, around $1.3 million. You could argue, though, insider selling, it doesn't necessarily give us much information because we don't know the background to why they sold, personal or financial. And in fact, the share price isn't too far off the current trading price as well, and that was around a month ago. As always, though, do let us know your thoughts on whether or not this is something you do take into consideration. We then move on to institutional ownership. Around 82%, we see $16 billion worth of sales by the institutions over the last 12 months. 
We see a lot more buying during that same period, 265 billion. And when we do take a look at the more recent quarter, we do see that same trend apparent as well. 4.2 billion buys versus 2.3 billion sales. And again, the same in the previous quarter. So not just over the last 12 months, a lot of institutions plowing a lot of money into Adobe, but we also note this over the more recent quarter. So very interesting to note as well. Do let us know your thoughts as well in the comments below. Also, just to let you know, we have released our latest free weekly article we're releasing another one over the next few hours if you want access to this or any others all completely free do click on that pinned comment below and you can sign up and read straight away. Also, if you want to find out how to find undervalued stocks, we run through all the websites and articles that we go through on this channel as well. But let's get back to the numbers now and we will look at the earnings per share estimates as well as how they perform. This will give us a good idea of how Adobe will potentially perform over the next quarter tomorrow's earnings. And what we can already see, great news if you are a shareholder or considering, over the last four quarters, they have beaten analyst targets by a fair decent amount as well. So if I was a betting man, then I would possibly have some confidence that they would be able to beat their earnings report that we will see tomorrow after hours. So already off to a good start, 100% track record over the next quarter. So they are anticipating double digit increases year on year on the EPS. When we look even over the next three, we do also see high single digit increase. And if they do essentially execute on what they estimate for November 25, the forward P will drop substantially to around 22.75. So interesting to know, again, just because past performance, they've been very well, it doesn't mean the future they will, but we can see traditionally they have performed very well in comparison to what the analysts have estimated. So let's get into our first valuation grade of the episode. We have a D. Now, a few reasons for this, as you can see. First one that we'll point to is 25.68 on a P non-gap basis. Sector median, it is marginally lower. In fact, it is trading at a premium of around 7.7%. But again, do bear in mind, it could be justified when we do look at the sector at how they're performing in other aspects and other underlying metrics, which we will do. And again, there are other metrics here if you want. But the general theme across the board is that Adobe is trading at a premium to others in the sector. We then take a look at their growth grade. Now, they do get a C plus. So let's take a look and understand understand why. First things first, a revenue year on year growth, 10.76%, a lot better than the low single digit from the sector median. Same to be said from the forward looking around 11%, sector median just under 7%. And what we do notice though, one thing that I always like to draw your attention to, earnings per share on a forward looking basis, 17.1% year on year over the next five years. As we can see, sector median 13.86 so it is much better across the board again other metrics here if you do want to see in my personal opinion though that growth does look very solid we then draw your attention to the profitability and a plus pretty much right across the board 88 percent on a gross profit margin that is absolutely incredible that is something you do want to see where possible high margins and 50% is the number from the sector, so much better. And look at that net income, 24%, sector median, low single digit. So we can essentially understand why this company does trade at a premium to the sector. And also we can note cash from operations just under 7 billion, whilst others around 92 million. So in terms of a conclusion for this part, a buy from Wall Street, a double hold from the other two analysts, a D grade from valuation, C plus on growth with an A plus on profitability. Now in terms of how they've formed against others in the sector, as we can see in the application software, we have SAP, Salesforce, Intuit, as well as a few others. No surprises though, they are one of the worst, if not the worst performing, down 2% over the last 12 months. But interestingly as well, they are the only one out of these competitors that actually had a negative performance over the last 12 months. When we expand this over the last five years, again, one of the lowest performing, around 68%. When we expand this over the last 10 years, as we can see, even though they've returned 537%, which is very strong for a 10 year period, in terms of others in this industry, they are pretty much in the middle. So interesting to note, again, do bear in mind, past performance is not an indicator of future performance. Something that we like to add to our analysis is the comparison versus the S&P 500. Ultimately, if you're investing in a company that doesn't outperform the S&P, what is the actual point in investing, putting your money in, when you could sleep well at night, investing in some security, like an ETF, for example, the S&P. P500 that we have here. So over the last year, S&P 24%, Adobe down 2.5%, 
Over the last five years, again, the S&P has outperformed 86 versus 68. But when we do look over the last 10 years, if you have been a shareholder of Adobe, you would have significantly outperformed the S&P up 531% when in the same period, the S&P returned 173. Now you can draw your own conclusions to that, whether or not you think over the shorter term, it hasn't been a great investment or whether you think over the longer term, this one can still outperform the S&P over the next 10 years. Now, what we can take a look at now is essentially running into some of their metrics, understanding how they've performed historically and what they are expecting over the next 12 months. So on the free cash flow, very important. We want increases consistently over the longer term. That is exactly what we get with Adobe. 229 in 2014, 15, 20 and 23. So we can see strong growth, even though it has dropped from the 2022 position, 2024, we are anticipating a nice increase. So off to a good start there. In terms of sales growth, always a worry with companies that grow at a very rapid rate that it will start to slow down. Something that we have seen here with Adobe, but even so 2022, 2023, nice double digit increases on a trailing 12 month around 11%. And that is anticipated for the full year of 2024 as well. So still Still looking very solid and as we always say we want to see companies that continue to increase their top line as well as those margins interestingly as well they have also done some share buybacks although minimal and very inconsistently 508 down to 458 so they are returning some of that excess cash to investor pockets total sales another format to what we just saw earlier and roic i love to see this i want 10 percent or more to give me faith management are able to effectively allocate their capital not only is it above that for the majority of the last 10 years but it has been increasing 32 percent over the last full year 36 percent on a trailing 12 month as well very very positive to know it makes it incredibly attractive to investors to consider this purchase and what did I say a few minutes ago? We want companies increasing their top line revenue that Adobe have done, but also those margins, very, very nice. And in fact, when we looked earlier, their margins against the sector were much stronger. So a very good sign of a company you need to consider for the portfolio. And if that wasn't enough, free cash flow margin consistently very high. We want a minimum of around 7% in this industry. So the fact that we're seeing 36% in the more recent year is essentially something very nice to note. Net debt to EBITDA, earnings before interest tax depreciation amortization remember correlates to the balance sheet strength and what we can see zero across the board pretty much for the majority of the last 10 years indicating it won't even take them one day to pay off all of their debt net of cash on hand something anticipated for 2024 as well so lots of positives here to note so now let's jump into the valuation model and as always if you do enjoy the content value is being provided smash that like button hit that subscribe and bell button so you are continually notified of these videos as they drop now the first model we're using is the multiples valuation model companies in a similar sector and size that we analyzed not too long ago their average p multiplied by the eps of adobe to give an intrinsic value showing massive undervaluation signal and what this essentially emphasizes is that adobe is trading at a much lower p than those in a similar sector and size now typically we would then move on to the dividend discount model adobe did historically pay dividend they don't currently so maybe this is one to keep an eye on possibly whether or not similar to other companies that we have seen over the last 12 months like salesforce or like meta like alphabet whether or not they could be announcing a dividend soon we then look at the DCF model. We have the free cash flow year on year, the average growth rate. And forward looking, we've gone for our first growth rate, which is a low rate at 10%. With the discount rate, we get the present value of future free cash flows and terminal value. Add together with the cash, subtract total debt, get to the equity value, divide by the shares outstanding. And we get here an intrinsic value showing undervaluation. So if you're happy with that rate, then you would be seeing around 8% implied upside. But someone may turn around and say that is too low. Their average is around 23%. It should be a little bit higher. So for 12%, we can essentially see an intrinsic value of $578. This does indicate an upside of 25%. Again, someone may say you've got to be less conservative, a little bit more optimistic. And at 14%, we see an intrinsic value of $664 indicating a 43% implied upside. Now, bear in mind, this is subjective and you can grab a copy of this model by clicking on the pinned comment below, effectively running your own numbers through, whether it's for Adobe or other companies on your watch list or in your portfolio. But as we said in the next slide, we are going to take through a low rate to be on a lot more conservative side at 10%. Whether or not you do agree, this is what we will be taking forwards. Again, we do like to be a little bit more on the conservative side on this channel. 
And we can see then in today's episode, the intrinsic value is the average of these two models coming to around $604. Now the current trading price does sit at 463. And as always, we do like to implement a margin of safety, 10% always the starting point. We only execute on this if we believe it meets our three golden criteria, a wide moat, strong financial metrics, good forward looking data. And if you believe that for Adobe, well, it is a buy up to $543 at 15% up to 513. And then we keep going till it's near the current trading price. Now it isn't at a 25% MOS level just yet. So right now, based on those estimates and judgments, we are sitting between a 20 to 25% MOS level. In terms of Wall Street though, what do they see? What do they envisage over the next 12 months? As we indicated earlier, they do see this as a buy. In fact, their target price isn't that far off our intrinsic value and that gives upside implied around 31 percent over the next 12 months do bear in mind though this is coming from essentially using a 10 percent growth rate moving forwards so you could argue that is a little bit too low and therefore with a 20 percent margin of safety on top of this conservative estimate this could be considered a buy although again this does depend on yourself as an investor your thesis your risk tolerance and whether or not you believe 20 percent is sufficient as always though do let me know your thoughts in the comments below is this one you're looking to buy before the earnings maybe you want some comfort from the earnings that they are still on track to hit all these numbers that we have run through or maybe this just isn't one for you now for the portfolio as always if you enjoyed today's episode smash that like button hit that subscribe and bell button and as always we'll see you all on the next one